Hey guys, Jeffrey with Colorado Mountain Man. A lot of people ask about what kit I carry into the backcountry for my medical stuff. So today we're going to go through my uh, kind of my larger medical kit, and uh, I'll show you what I carry in there for uh, for treating and diagnosing and a little bit of evacuation stuff on there. So stay tuned. We'll go through the whole thing. So I'm using the Maxpedition, I think it is the Devil Dog, really cool pack, it's got a lot of compartments here which lets me organize things. So on the outside I carry things that I'm going to need to access really, really quickly. Uh, I remember seeing a video a guy made a couple years ago, and I don't want to call anybody, I don't remember his name, but uh, he was showing his kit and he opened it up and he's like, so I carry my chapstick right here, because it's the first thing, because I use it all the time. Um, that's, I guess that makes sense, That would that's not really a medical kit to me, that's kind of a boo-boo kit. So the stuff you want to carry and immediately access are things to address life threats. You want to expose injuries. You want to you know, protect yourself with BSI. You want to be able to stop some of these big life threats, airway compromise, massive hemorrhage, things like that. So starting here, we've got some trauma shears. Uh, I use these all the time, uh, working as a medic to expose people. You can really cut clothes really well with this. You can cut wetsuits, belts, all that stuff. Leatherman uh, Surge right up here. Got some PPE, so I've got a uh, N95 respirator mask and a whole bunch of gloves. Uh, people carry one pair of gloves. If you're taking care of somebody for more than about 20 minutes, you're going to need one more than more pair of gloves. Uh, every time you assess another patient, you're going to have to switch them out. So a whole bunch of gloves. They're pretty much free. They're so cheap. So over here, got some tourniquets, my massive hemorrhage kit, so I can really, really quickly grab these. Got a couple tourniquets. Tourniquets. Got an Israeli bandage. At the very, very bottom, I have uh, a hemostatic agent. So we've got some cat tourniquets here, an Israeli bandage, two needle decompression needles. Uh, I guess I should have mentioned this at the beginning of it. Uh, I'm not your medical director. I'm not a doctor. I'm not your medical director. I'm not your search and rescue guy or your paramedic. I carry this stuff because I have the medical direction to use it and the training to use it. If you don't have that stuff, it still might be appropriate to carry. Maybe somebody else could see it and use your stuff on you, but anything that I'm carrying just because you've seen this video, you do not have permission to carry because you've seen the video. So needles for a needle decompression thoracostomy, this is not a take a six hour first aid class and use it kind of thing. Same with tourniquets. If you're in an area where you're not allowed to use tourniquets or if your medical director does not let you use them, don't use them. This is what I carry. So two needles for decompression. I think they're 14 gauges by something really big. Um, Israeli bandage. This is the kind of thing you can come up on somebody using that march protocol that we talk about in our classes. First thing, massive hemorrhage. Uh, so if you come up on somebody and you're not sure what's going on, but they've got a huge, huge bleed, slap a tourniquet on there. You can grab that within a second of opening the kit. Uh, put an Israeli on there if you need to continue your assessment. So massive trauma stuff. Really, really is easily accessible. Go to our front pouch. Got some more trauma stuff here. Um, so many kits that you see are 300 different shapes of band-aids and they try to sell it off as a kit. That's not what, we were, what we're trying to do. We're gonna learn how to use multi-pore or uh, trans-pore tape to seal wounds and to make band-aids. Uh, if all you have is a small little finger knuckle band-aid, that's the only thing you can use it for. If you have tape, four by four gauze, it's sterile, you can make any kind of bandage you need to. So leave all the band-aids at home in the 65 different shapes and, and flavors or whatever. Uh, Multi-pore tape, got some one-eighth, one-eighth, half-inch or one-inch, whatever. This stuff is everywhere in hospitals. It's pretty cheap stuff. Cravat for splinting. Some of those sterile 4 by 4s that I was talking about. So sterile 4 by 4 gauze. Sam splinting for padding and for orthopedic stuff. I've got some quick cloth here. This isn't so much for stopping a massive bleed. This is more of a dressing that you can leave on, like a head wound or something, a deep head wound with a lot of bleed coming out of there. Uh, SWAT tourniquet as well. And just more stuff for immobilizing, uh, dealing with maybe some orthopedic injuries and massive bleeds. I've got some combat gauze as well. So opening this one. So more splinting. So I've got more tape, more cravats, more orthopedic stuff, and more tape. Uh, the stuff that you will never, ever say I have too much of, ace wraps, tape, you'll always find a use for that. Uh, when you start carrying specialized stuff is when it's hard to, to really justify it, but 
two CM splints, that seems like a lot to carry, but if somebody falls and they're unresponsive and they broke their arm, you've already accounted for every SAM splint in your kit, and now you're going to have to start using other stuff. So don't be afraid to carry some of these things, a bunch of SAM splints, a bunch of ACE wrap, a bunch of things for bleeding, uh, instead of a whole random assortment of stuff that you're never really going to use or that doesn't really help out in wilderness medicine. Uh, biggest compartment here, biggest thing. So got some baby wipes there. It's really care care, which really fit. Got a pulse oximeter. Uh, if you don't know anything about pulse oxes and pulses, it's probably not worth carrying it. Uh, if you travel in high altitude a lot, I carry this. Let me get a quick reading and see if uh, usually I can get a pulse just like that. And you can see their uh, the percentage of saturated, uh, saturated hemoglobin molecules in their blood. Uh, really good for elevation, uh, especially out here. We're at 9,000 and some odd feet. Uh, you can definitely see a marked uh, decline in some people. And, and you can... Uh, see their pulse as well really quickly. Uh, back to wound closure, I've got some steri strips. I only care these because I uh, got them from the hospital. Um, we teach in our, w our BWLS and our AWLS class is how to close wounds without sutures, which are ridiculous, without using steri strips, just using our multi-purpose tape to close wounds. So I carry them just because I have them. As soon as I use them or exp they're expired, I'll get rid of them and go back to using tape all the time. Um, a large syringe for irrigation. So this isn't a tiny little thing. This isn't a one mil insulin syringe to irrigate some of these wounds or uh, you know, somebody gets a bee sting, something like that. Uh, you, uh, I just said the bee sting because I saw it around your face here. <laughs> so you use this to, to irrigate some of the wounds that people would have in the back country. Uh, in the front country, you have all that running water. You can clean things out. In the back country, you can't. So they recommend using a 60 mil syringe. So you can put a lot of pressure there through a 14 gauge catheter, so a soft plastic catheter. Uh, when you come out to our classes, we do pig's feet for that. So we lacerate them, get them all nasty, and show you how to get all that potentially infective material out of there. Um, continuing with airway, we've got some basic airway adjuncts. Um, as a paramedic, I can intubate, I can do surgical things. But in the back country, I just want something really, really quick. So if you Google OPA or oropharyngeal airway, uh, again, I'm not telling you you're allowed to use this. I'm just showing you some devices that I carry. This is used to displace the tongue and give you a patent airway. When somebody's unresponsive, their tongue just slips to the back of their palate. Uh, they can snore, not get their respirations in. Um, a few more Israeli bandages, bandages some more uh, ACE wrap. As you can tell, I love that stuff. And then for ventilating the patient, I use a bag valve mask. Um, this is a little bit bigger than what most people would carry. This is not a multi-purpose thing. This has only one purpose. And if you're ventilating somebody with this, um, I'm not a big fan. We talk about CPR in the backcountry in our class. It's not really indicated except for drowning or lightning injury. So the places I hang out, both of those could happen. Um, if you want to see why I carry this, go to one of the CPR mannequins with your buddy and do CPR for an hour and tell me how freaking exhausted you are doing that rest, two rescue breaths of every 30 seconds or whatever it is. Uh, with this, you can really check the pressure. I'm not gonna talk about this too much. This is, this is an advanced skill, but I carry one. And if you have to bag somebody and ventilate them post drowning, uh, you're gonna be thanking, thankful that you're, you know, you're able to do that uh, instead of breathing for them for, for 20 minutes. So, and of course I have a, a mask for that as well. So. The only other thing that I carry, uh, and I'm not going to discuss very much, um, I carry some medications here. Um, if you don't know what these are, then don't use them. If you don't have a prescription, you're not going to get them, don't use them. Don't use them on somebody else. Um, I carry them because I, uh, I work under medical direction, and there's some rescue medications in the back country that can really help. Albuterol and a vental inhaler, this can save somebody's life. Epinephrine, I carry some antiemetics, Benadryl, things like that, uh, injectables, and I carry this stuff. I'm not even going to show that really or go over it because it just is. Carry whatever medication you need. If for you, aspirin and Imodium is what you need, then carry that. Um, oral Benadryl is always really helpful. Any medications that you have, then you should be bringing, obviously. Um, and I also have usually a glucometer in here so I can check somebody's blood glucose. That can really rule out a lot of uh, potential causes of an altered mental status when you're in the backcountry. So that's what I carry. Uh, as I said, some of this stuff is a little bit more advanced than the average person might carry. Uh, a lot of people probably see this and say, man, there's, there isn't really a lot of variety there. You know, I have a lot of ACE bandages. I have a lot of four by four gauze in there and a lot of tape. And that's because you can do a lot of stuff with that when you're a little creative with it. So uh, if you have any questions about anything, please send me an email or comment below. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have.